I've had a lot of jobs and roles through the years, from owning my own business, to demand planner, to supply chain transformation, to Dr. Love computer compatibility back in high school. We won't talk about that last one. Let's get to it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Another fabulous episode of IBF On Demand. I'm your doctor of many things and host, Eric Wilson. You can find me at eric at ibf.org. That's eric at ibf.org. Make sure you follow me on LinkedIn, YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, Check me out. Drop me a line on any of those DMs that you like as well. Love to connect with anybody. Just FYI, I don't look at the LinkedIn direct message as much. So if you've emailed me there, I may have missed it, so you might want to reach out, eric at ibf.org. That's eric at ibf.org. That's why I say it. We also have a sponsor. Please reach out to them as well. That's a great sponsor, Arkiva, driving business transformation by solving what others cannot. Thank you, Arkiva. Wonderful sponsor. They do wonderful work. I said I've used them many times. Check them out as well. Well, I just got back from the Chicago conference. It was a great conference. It is a growing conference every year. There's a lot of great people there that are doing some amazing things in sales and operations planning. By the way, it was a global best practice sales and operations planning conference in Chicago. We do it every year, about June, uh, generally in Chicago. So this is, you know, I forget what number it is, but we've been doing it quite a few years. I said it's growing every year. So next year, check it out. But it was a great conference. There's a lot of great things I'm, I'm listening to hear people do. It was also the launch of our new book. It was exciting to be able to actually have the book in my hand and hand it to people. I uh, was able to sign quite a few copies for people, which is exciting to do. I said, because it, it is something I'm passionate about, something I've spent a few years and and me and my co-author Amy uh, did a lot of work on it. And she's going to be coming up on a podcast before too long. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. I, I said, just because it's something special to both of us that we worked hard on, but it's, it's great information we wanted to be able to share as well. So we were able to launch that book. So if you want to check that out, that's the Practical Guide for Sales and Operations Planning, SNOP IBP. Uh, it's available at IBF.org, available on Amazon, wherever you want to you go. You can probably find the book there as well. It's starting to work its way in some different markets. Uh, but check it out. Wonderful book. Really lays out exactly SNOP. It's, it's, it's the modern day roadmap and handbook for SNOP uh, IBP. Talks about people, process, tools, analytics, information, KPIs, across the board as a a emerging essential next level vanguard type of maturity it's a great reference great read whatever you want wherever you are wherever uh, level you are it's an ideal book for you and by the way 40 percent of it i didn't even have to write i'm using it from people that spoke at this conference experts in the field i compiled their best practices and information into this one book so check it out it's a great another thing happened at as well we have a cocktail hour, and we, we extended our cocktail hour into the inaugural meetup of the IBF Windy City, uh, Windy City chapter. So it's an IBF meetup. Hopefully, it's going to become a sustained chapter in the future. So that was a great time uh, being able to network. Networking is a great part of these conferences as well. We had a phenomenal time networking with like-minded people, finding out that you're not alone, dealing with the same things. I want to thank uh, them for putting together the meetup there. Uh, it's a great opportunity to really get things started and hopefully sustain themselves. And we're going to be able to find some other, you know, beyond just the inaugural meetup, a sustainable chapter in the Windy City going forward as well. So stay tuned for that. More information on IBF.org. One of the questions I get constantly is where should planning be? Or where should demand planning be? Or where should, you know, Lori, you know, what functions should it, it fall under? The other thing that kind of falls into that as well is people that are coming into the field, where do they go and what's their career path after they get into different roles? Well, interesting, when you look at IBF research, we do a lot of research. When you look at that research, almost half of the organizations out there Demand planning, business forecasting falls under supply chain 
or in some type of operations, about 48%. Also see about 10% is an independent role, meaning it reports directly to a business unit owner or an executive as an independent function, as a forecasting function. So about 10% there. Then you have about 15% are sitting in sales. About 8% are sitting in finance. And then you have the rest as far as, you know, about 11, 12, whatever's left percent wise. And then about 20% left is going to be other roles like marketing, strategic uh, planning, product, uh, you know, uh, development, things of that sort. The other interesting thing, though, is when you look at forecast air, because we measure that as well with companies. And we have that as self-reporting we measure. And when you look at that, the best forecast accuracy or the least amount of error is actually independent, not surprisingly, 20%, 20.4% to be exact. The worst, the worst between any function reporting is actually supply chain or operations at almost six points higher, 26.3% is your uh, MAPE at a one month lag. So the worst error is actually in where most people are. So what is the right answer? And like most things in life, and my favorite response to most anything is it depends. The real answer is it depends. It doesn't matter where you are. I can actually make an argument for everywhere. The reason why over half are in supply planning because it's closest to the internal user. You're speaking their language. You're taking latency out of that signal. So they're willing to forego a little bit of the accuracy to be able to have that signal sooner and in the right level and the right uh, right uh, communicate the right uh, things to supply. It's the reason because majority of the forecast is used for supply planning purposes. I've seen some organizations though, very sales funnel, contract oriented. Sales made the perfect sense because you're closer to the end user, the customer that's going to be using your product. So therefore, you want to take out latency of that process. You want to be able to make sure you can, you know, get information quicker and you speak their language. I've seen finance because it's a very finance focus. Independent makes, uh, uh, makes sense for some. It doesn't matter. Ultimately, I've been in many of those roles. It matters the person. It matters an independent type of personality no matter where you are. Trying to create an unconstrained, unbiased forecast no matter where you are. The same goes for industry. The right person will excel in any function, but also most any industry as well. These roles are transferable, not only between different functional reporting, but different industries as well. Fundamentals don't change, just companies and products and reporting do. That's the reason why I'm going to have on this next guest. Michael is currently the Director of Sales and Operations Planning at Mertz Aesthetics. He has, though, over 27 years of experience in supply chain planning across multiple industries. He's implemented SNOP processes across all these industries and worked in sales, operations, and planning. He's leading the uh, introductory of the IBF Chicagoland chapter as well. I got to meet him in Chicago uh, at the inaugural SNOP uh, IBF meetup there. So please help me welcome Michael as I talk a little bit about his career, but a little bit about it doesn't matter where you are and what you can do with it. Help me welcome Michael. So welcome, Michael. I'm excited to see you again. So to see you again, Eric. Yeah. So it was a great, uh, you know, kickoff to the uh, Chicagoland meetup, and, and hopefully, you know, that's going to continue. But one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on was we really talk about. I mean, you got 27 year experience, so you're almost as old as I am now. Uh, but you got a solid background I, 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 in all things. I mean, supply chain planning, demand and supply. Now you're doing SNOP as well. So you got you got a pretty extensive career there. Yes, I do. It's a, uh, it's been a fun journey, um, and we're still going strong with it. We're not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> I always say that you know I have the scars to prove it, so I'm betting you have a few battle wounds there as well. <laughs> that we that we do that we do. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one one of the things about being uh, with such a you know great career it comes comes wisdom, but the other thing that comes with a great career is, is wisdom comes from we've seen so many things happen in so many you know 
we, we've uh, things that people are experiencing now is new. We've lived similar situations in the past and had to deal with. So it, it's it, we, it's reliving some of those for us. Yeah, no, absolutely. And what's interesting is no matter throughout my career, what company I've been with, what industry I've been with, same topics come up. Same, It's they the do. same topics. Um, they do. And we sit there and we think about it. It's, it. At the end of the day, it's about making sure we can get the right product to our customers at the right time that they want it at the best margin possible for the organization that you're working for. That, it, that, that, that doesn't, doesn't change. Doesn't change. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So, real quick, since I've since I've built you up as having this, you know, long, you know, successful career, what are some of the roles you had, or more so, what are some of the industries you've been part of? Yeah. So I started off, spent 19 years with Caterpillar, um, which is, of course, in uh, heavy manufacturing. Um, and Caterpillar, I did numerous roles from. Demand planning, sales and operations planning, um, all the way through end-to-end value chain management um, there as well. And then after my time at Caterpillar, um, moved into a organization, Ascendant, which is a redistributor, setting up sales and operations planning process for them and the supply planning process and then moved into cpg world for a couple of years working uh setting up a sales and operations planning demand planning supply planning processes and now i am with uh, MERS aesthetics and the pharma industry um, establishing and setting up a sales and operations planning process demand planning process supply planning processes here in that MERS aesthetics it's really a little different that I am setting up a, um, what I would call, um, we're driving a bus in class, we're driving that operational efficiency um, type of organization here, a center of excellence organization is what we're really driving for. Okay, so, so with that, I said there was a lot of different roles, and there was some pretty different industries in there. I mean, you got pharma, you got CPG, I mean, Caterpillar, big, heavy equipment stuff. I mean, there's a yep. lot of different industries in there. So so we, we're going to talk about the similarities. But before I get that, what are some of the biggest differences probably between those industries that you can see? That brings you know, challenges to the table. Yeah. I mean, on the demand side, it's really, you know, it's just understanding the product that you're playing in, you know, and understanding if you're forecasting the mining business, you know, you're realizing yet you small volume, um, high dollars. Um, so you want to make sure that you're truly understanding what's going on with, with the customers and the demand versus when you get into CPG or pharma and you're dealing with millions of units and, and um, you real high volume turnover type of type of products, it's still you have to understand what's driving the demand. You know, are your drivers similar or, you know, they're not going to be exactly the same, but they're going to be pretty close. You know, you talk about distribution gains and losses. That applies across whether I'm dealing with Caterpillar or not. You talk about pricing impacts. You talk about, you know, promotional impacts. All that's, yeah, it's different because the industry is different. But the reality is, is the theory is still the same. Okay, so I think you're, you're already hitting then on my next question. If I really talked about the differences, what are those key similar? What are the, what are the fundamentals that seem to, you know, from Caterpillar to Pharma? What are the, the similarities or the foundational pieces that you really take from one role to the next? Yeah, I did jump ahead on you a little bit. <laughs> um, That's all right. No, but it is. It's it's just realizing your foundations that you have in, in demand planning or even supply planning for that matter. Um, it's the same. You don't. It's the same foundational work stream. Like we have statistical modeling. You know, we had statistical modeling in Caterpillar. We have statistical modeling in pharma. But then it's like, okay, well, how do you adjust your statistical models if you want to need to adjust it? Well. You look at your trends, understand 
what my trends are doing. Yeah, as I said before, you got promotions, you got distribution networks. It's and and it's the same in theory, but yeah, the distribution is different. So you apply that right um, to to your staff forecast, and and you apply promotions. Promotions are a little bit different by industry, but still, the baseline theory is. If you have a promotion, you're expecting some sort of uplift to demand, right? And, and working with your sales and your marketing teams to figure out what's that uplift and how do we account for that uplift? Um, you know, it's all that's all to me common, no matter what industry we play in. So, I mean, is the did you see big differences between the data and the time horizons and the aggregations, or were there a lot of similarities there as well when it comes to planning? You know, it's, it's a little bit of a mix here and there. Um, mostly the organizations that I've been in, you know, we do mo- monthly planning on the demand side. You know, you can get down to weekly planning if you need be. But, you know, a lot of, you know, from Caterpillar, everything was monthly. We did monthly planning a lot. Um, Merce Aesthetics, we, we do monthly planning here in Pharma um, as, as well. When we look at our demand, we're looking at it in monthly buckets. Um, the data, yeah, the data is going to be every organization, you know, struggles with data. Um, every, every organization struggles with data. Um, the advantages are that some of your, if you're bigger, sometimes you'll have cleaner data than you do if you're smaller. Um, but I will always say one thing is that we've always struggled with data, no matter what industry I'm in. And that just requires you to roll your sleeves up and get down and dirty um, with the data um, to, to understand, okay, what do we have? What are we playing with here? Because it's not going to be common anywhere you go, which, you know, that's part of the challenge of changing industries. And part of the fun is you get to roll up your sleeves and you get to figure out, okay, what's this information? What's this data look like? What's driving this information what's driving the sales in this industry versus a different industry. Yeah. I mean, I, I know when going through all my careers, one of the biggest lessons I learned was some of these companies, I mean, very large organizations and well-known and it kind of from the outside, I'm expecting them to have good data, good processes. And the thing that really was the surprise for me is you're going into any company. They still have, fundamental issues that need solved. They got data issues that, you know, just because it's the large comp- companies doesn't mean they always have these pristine processes and data that everyone's dealing, no matter your size, with the same basic problems and issues is what I found. You know, that's absolutely, and that's what I've experienced as well across all, you know, four com- major companies I've been in is, each one of them has certain data issues. Um, and it really depends on their organizational structure of how seriously they take it, right? Do, do you have a, a data team, a data mining team, a business intelligence team that's responsible for it or not? Some did, some don't. And, you know, the ones that don't, it's like, okay, well, how do we, how do we go about and fixing the data? How do we clean it? How do we make sure we have the right principles um, under the data, the foundational aspects of that data, so we can make sure people can trust it? You know, one of the biggest challenges you have with data and you're doing any sort of analysis planning is people have to trust it. Because the easiest thing for them to do with any sort of output you come out is, well, that data is garbage. We know from 15 years ago it was collected this way. And then people just lose confidence in what you're presenting and what you're doing because they don't trust the information. So data is very key and key fundamental to everything that we're doing in the planning space is we have to be able to trust it. Yeah. Okay, so looking at those people getting into the careers now that still has the 27 years ahead of them, uh, as far as moving industries and everything, can, can you, what, what's some things you can make it a little less scary for them to say, hey, it, it's, it, it, you're thinking about a move, 
from one complete industry to another is not a bad move sometimes. You, you mentioned the challenges. What's some of the other things that, you know, as far as giving people reassurance that can, they can take on a new role in a new industry? Yeah, it's, I think what you have to realize is, is fundamentally when you're dealing with planning, you're dealing with supply chain, the fundamentals transfer industries. So what you've learned in, in industry A those will those fundamentals will apply to your next industry um so don't be as scared to learn say oh my god i don't have experience in that industry you do it's the fundamentals of supply chain at the end of the day apply across the industries you just gotta learn what the industry is you know but you have the background you have the fundamentals that you can go from industry A to industry B to industry C with with relatively ease. As you say, I started in heavy construction, you know, going from heavy construction to redistribution to CPG land to pharma. Trust me, those last three have nothing to do or nothing alike. They, they don't look like heavy construction at all. <laughs> yeah, not at all. You know, not at all. And um, but the fundamentals I learned at CAT, the the background I learned in supply chain allowed me to make those switches rather easily. So, what are some of the biggest skills or the transferable, you know, knowledge that people need to start building? to be more comfortable and be able to find a career in any industry? What's some of the biggest transferable skills you can think of? As you get used to data, as you're needing, because one of the first things you got to do when you transfer industries is, as we said, you got to roll up your sleeves. And if you're afraid of getting down and dirty with the data, you'll struggle. Because that's the first thing you have to do. So you have to you know, enjoy that aspect of it. Because it does make it easier. Um, the other parts of it is just lean on your fundamentals. You know, from a demand planning standpoint, you know what are the key fundamentals of demand planning, and make sure you can take those key fundamentals and carry them forward with you, and and bring them forward with you. As I said at the very beginning, when we talk about demand planning, we talk about supply planning, talk about supply chain. At the end of the day, we're always, no matter what industry we're in, we're trying to always do the same thing, right? Make sure we yeah. can provide the best demand signal possible to the operations team so the operations can, at the end of the day, supply the product that they need to supply to our end user or customer when they want it at the margins we're after. So always be willing to lean on that background that you have and don't be afraid of a completely different industry um, because you can still make that switch if you have fundamentals, if, if you know it, it's solid planning background. Okay, so I'd be amiss if just everything's going to be easy. So you've had a few different career paths in your, you know, your career, but what's the hardest part or the learning car curve of starting a new role besides the data? We already said we got to, you know, yeah. roll up our sleeves, get into the data. We know that part. But when you're starting a new role, that first 60, 90 days, what's the hardest part of the learning curve going into a new, brand new industry? Learning learning the industry. And the best way to learn the industry is you got to meet people. You got to get out and talk to people. Um, you know, this is one of the things, while you're but I'm in demand planning, tr true, but you need to go out or supply planning. Go out and talk to the sales force. Go out and talk to the people, the customers, if you can get that far out. So you can learn the industry, learn what's driving the industry. Um, you can't just, you know, I had a manager once tell me about managing people one time. He goes, and I think this applies to this discussion as well. He goes, remember, you can't manage from sitting in your desk. You can't manage from your office. You can't learn a new industry just by looking at the data. So you got to go out and touch the industry. You got to go out and ask the salespeople if you could ride along with them to 
to a customer visit to see what the customer is like. You ask the sourcing people if you can ride along with them to see what your suppliers are like and, and understand what's driving them, what's important to them as well. So I think the biggest challenge is putting yourself out there to say, okay, I have to now learn this industry. How do I learn it? I have to be able to touch people. I got to be able to not just look at data, but actually physically go out and touch people and understand what's driving their requirements, what's driving their needs, both from a customer standpoint as well as a supplier standpoint. That's the thing. I mean, this is fun <laughs> what we do. It's, it's, it's weird, but it is fun what we do. And you mentioned yes. those fundamentals transferred no matter whatever path you end up taking and, and, and definitely proof of that. And, and you mentioned that getting out and networking and knowing people. And that, I know that's something you, you, you pride yourself in is, is networking. And, and I'm, I'm happy to see there's people in Chicago that's starting to get together. It's like-minded and you can start sharing yeah. from multiple different industries. That's really the key of those meetups that you're doing. And hopefully that's sustainable for you. And you guys uh, end up having a few more. And so I let people reach out to you or reach out to IBF. And hopefully we can, we can find people you can network in the future with. No, ab absolutely, and we're looking forward to continuing to uh, grow the Chicagoland IBF chapter. Um, yeah. As you said, get get more industries um, in there and get some more uh, meetups uh, scheduled here in the, the fall and, and spring of next year so people can get together, they can network, they can talk with their uh, like-minded individuals in the planning horizon and be able to share ideas and share concepts uh, with them with uh, IBF support um, of that. So yeah, looking forward to continuing to grow our Chicago land IBF chapter as we're just starting that process as we, uh, as you well know. Absolutely. Well, well, thanks for being a part of this. Oh, thank you. Anytime. So I'll see you again soon. See you soon. Bye. I've had a lot of roles through my career. I've worked in multiple industries and sizes of organizations. I, I, got the, I got the scars to prove it. I've been in your roles and I've done it with a lot of companies with a lot of different sizes. I've been demand. I've been in supply. I've had designated SNOP role that I've had. I was even the president of a division once uh, that helped building it out and for uh, so they could sell it. The last few years in my current role through, and through consulting, doing independent consulting and with IBF, I've worked with a lot of many companies out there as well, helping solve their problems and achieve exponential improvements. And through that process, I've worked with a lot of companies and a lot of different industries, and I've seen a lot of, through that as well. Basically, what I'm saying is I'm old, but also I've seen a lot. And the one thing I've learned is there's not a lot, a whole lot of differences. I'll go into companies and they think that, yeah, we're unique, underlining they have very similar problems and it's similar fundamentals that generally solve the problem fundamentals are exactly that they're built upon what is foundational and if you're a practitioner or an individual training is allows you to embrace some of those fundamentals check out ibf as a resource we have a lot of trainings that we do we do in-house trainings for companies but we also do individual trainings uh, at conferences there's other ways reach out to me eric at ibf.org there's a lot we can do as far as training training is a great way that allows you to have those fundamentals for whatever you do because transferable like like michael was talking about when you go into other industries and different roles these skills and these fundamentals are transferable well, that's a wrap. I'm going to go search out my next career. Maybe it would be a food critic or something with bourbon. That's what I'm into. My name is Eric. You can find me at eric at ibf.org. That's eric at ibf.org. I said, feel free to reach out to me. You can find me on LinkedIn there as well. And I want to thank Arkiva, building, driving business transformation by solving what others cannot. They help solve a lot of your problems as well. It, they not only take care of the fundamentals, but they also take it to the next level with an advanced planning system that fe meets your needs. Remember, I have that new book just came out. Love it. The Practical Guide for Sales and Operations Planning, SNOP IBP. It's a passion of mine. I've been working on for, uh, with them on for a couple years now and with other authors. Happy to share it with you as well. And also, if you're thinking about meeting up, as I mentioned, the one's going to be in Chicagoland uh, meetup. 
Uh, hopefully they're going to be doing a, a chapter. We also have New York chapter. We have a Boston chapter, a Berkeley chapter as well. So there's other ones out there as well. So remember the fundamentals are exactly that. They're the basics. And don't forget one basic everyone needs to do. Don't forget. Wash your hands.